In this Photoshop demo, we're going to take a picture of a skyline with a clear sky and look at how you can get started adding star trails or a starry night image to it. Hey guys, my name is Joe Petralia with Evervisions. Um, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look at how you can add those really nice star trails images with the long exposure concentric circles or uh, something like the Milky Way to a photo that you may already have um, a cityscape for example with a clear sky and you want to kind of enhance that with a special effect. To get those types of images you have to go find a, a dark place with no light pollution, set up your tripod and your camera and in the case of the star trails take many photos and stitch them together later uh, or you just have to have really, really good equipment to, to get something like that in, in high quality. But let's say you just want to tinker around, fool around, and put something up on, on Instagram. You can go out and buy an image that's already made for you and Photoshop that into your Skyline photo. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, here we are in Photoshop, and we're looking at a picture of the Skyline of San Diego, uh, the sunrise, and this was taken from um, the Coronado area and looking back towards the San Diego skyline, so looking east. And I've added in uh, two images which we're gonna use to um, blend in with this image. One is just of uh, the stars, the Milky Way galaxy, and the other is of some star trails. And uh, I'm gonna show you how we can kind of fake putting these into this sky. So let's get started. All right, let's try the, um, uh, we'll do the, the stars first. Um, first thing we want to do is change the blending mode to screen and that's really sort of the biggest the biggest step and now we can transform this this sky and, and put it in our image where we want and I know I'm enlarging this one and it may lose some clarity you usually probably want to go the other way around in other words you want to make the San Diego uh, photo smaller to match the size of of this one but just for the demonstration this this will work just fine so um, I want to make sure I get these trees sort of out of the way here so I'm gonna kind of just drag them a little bit below the uh, you can see the we just want to make sure they're below the skyline so we don't have to worry about um, masking that part out later on so let's hit enter to apply our transformation and um, we can turn this uh, we can turn this layer a little bit darker and we can do that by adding a levels adjustment layer so we can sort of match the, the tones in the background San Diego skyline. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment and I want it to only affect the stars layer and to do that I need to make this into a, a clipping layer or create a clipping mask and one of the ways you can do that is by holding alt or option and hovering over the border between the two layers that you want to apply this to and just click and it'll apply a clipping mask. So now any levels adjustment that we make is only going to affect the stars and not the San Diego skyline which is exactly what we want. So you can see we're just kind of blending this in a, a little bit better. Um, that looks pretty good. Um, we can try to adjust the hue saturation of the stars layer maybe to make it more I don't know change the colors up a little bit to see if we can make that help us blend in the stars a little bit better and again I'm going to make a clipping mask uh, this time another way you can do it is right clicking on the layer create clipping mask so it's clipping these two adjustment layers to the stars layer um, and what we can do is just play around with some of our sliders here and maybe you know we want to add some more um, blues or or whatever into the star sky um, just play around with these sliders to see what you can do to kind of make them uh, make the colors of the stars photo match the colors of the, the background sky and, and you can see it's it's not that major of a difference but I don't know it might help a little bit but anyways you get the idea you can play around with that to try and match in case your uh, original stars photo doesn't really match up color wise with the the sky you're trying to put it into hue saturation is one way you can try and get those to match a little bit um, okay, uh, another thing we can try to match colors even further is a color balance. So let's add a color balance adjustment layer and again we're going to clip that. Um, and let's just play around and see what, 
we can get. You can see like I'm taking some of the yellows out and adding some more blues and it's just helping it blend in to the background sky a little bit uh, better. So let's see what that did. A little bit. I mean, you just want to try and make this as believable as possible and uh, again, use the hue saturation and color balance and the levels to try and blend in the two uh, photos that you're putting together and you, you'll have pretty good results I think. Um, okay the next thing we want to do is uh, you can see this doesn't look good right here so we want to mask out uh, that stuff so it, we wouldn't have stars in front of the buildings or we wouldn't have a hard edge like this so we need to, to mask that out. We could have done that first so actually what I'm going to do to help me see that a little bit better is turn off my adjustment layers for a second and I'm going to turn off the stars layer because I need to make a selection. So I want, I don't want this to appear. I could use a brush tool to brush that out, but I want to make a better selection in between these buildings and things like that. So I'm going to try this quick selection tool on the initial sky layer. And here's the quick selection tool. You can hit W and you can just paint around in your sky. And you can see it does a pretty good job of uh, separating the sky to the buildings. You can see it, it selected the buildings a little bit here, but we can hold the Alt or Option key and drag the minus uh, brush over the building and it'll um, work its way and, and uh, figure out what it needs, what you're trying to select and what you're not trying to select. And then we can go back in and, and get these small areas here. Um, I think that looks pretty good for uh, these pur our purposes today. So. I'm going to turn this back on and select my layer and now I can apply a layer mask and you can see, you can see it applied white reveals, black conceals. Um, we can go in here and now we can use our brush and we can clean this up a little bit if we want. So just grab our brush tool and you know just I've got my flow pretty low. We can raise that if we want and just kind of brush that out to make a, a bit, little bit of a cleaner mask. And, you know, if this was a really high resolution image and we were having a client ask us for this or it was going in our portfolio, we may want to even take more time and get a, a better selection. But uh, the quick selection tool for, for this is, is just fine. And I'll just turn these back on. And now we can see, um, you know, it will probably fade. You can see, like in the in the sky itself, it's it's it, it fades. Uh, whoops, it fades light to dark. So we kind of want to make our um, our mass sort of match up with that. And we can do that with. Let's try a linear gradient first. So we're going to add um, a black to transparent black linear gradient, and you just click and drag kind of like this and it will start from the light area and move into the dark area maybe go up a little bit more in that direction and a little bit like that and I think that's that's looking a little bit better and if your sky you think it's too bright like these stars are too bright you can adjust the opacity here and bring that down to create whatever kind of effect you want maybe we'll stick with something just like that um, okay Let's see, what's the next thing I want to do here? Uh, we need to create the, the reflection of the sky in the, uh, the water because there would be a reflection of these stars, right? So um, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate of my four layers here. So the initial stars layer and the, the three adjustment layers we made. And I'm going to, so I've selected them. I'm going to hit Control or Command J and that made a duplicate. And what I want to do is merge those layers. So I'm going to, with them still selected, you can see we have our duplicates down here. Um, I'm going to merge uh, these layers right here. Okay. Now what I can do is uh, Commander Control T and I can flip uh, vertical and I can drag this down and I can try and match up uh, the sky there. You can almost see the the outline of the buildings here so I kind of just want to drag that like to match up the reflection of those buildings in um, the water and you can see <clears throat> excuse me our buildings are uh, a little bit blurred in the the reflection so what I can do is uh, apply a Gaussian blur to this duplicate a little bit to bring this back down this way just to sort of help make that look a little bit more believable 
um, something like that looks good. And um, since it carried over the mask, it did a pretty good job of like uh, not putting the stars in the, in the building. In fact, we can we can even nudge like nudge this down and try and match it up a little bit more. But if we want to remove some of these other stars that are what are visible where they really shouldn't be visible we can use a mask and this time um, I'm going to use a black brush and, and since it's not as like detailed looking I can just kind of paint out a, a couple uh, couple stars where I want them to be and let's, let's see here yeah oops take D for default X for the black and just mask out some of these. And it's not painting on my mask, which is weird. Let's see. Okay. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, let's switch over to the um, star, uh, the star trails uh, thing in, uh, layer, and see how we can we can make that work too. So let's group these layers right here, and we'll call that um, Milky Way. And let's turn that off, and let's turn this on, and work with this one. So now we're working with our star trails. Whoops! I want to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to Control or Command T. Let's drop our opacity so we can kind of see where we're going to move this and just um, transform this into place. And again, since I'm making this larger, I'm going to be losing some resolution in the star trails image. So uh, usually you want to go the other way around. In other words, make your San Diego uh, image match the size of your star trails image. So let's put it like right about there. You can see I'm trying to make sure I can just drag these this um, observatory down below the skyline so it's just going to save me some time and masking later so let's hit enter <clears throat> to apply the transformation and let's drag our opacity up and uh, what we can do is hit screen on the blending mode and uh, we can grab the same we need to put a mask on this again to hide where it's overlapping the buildings and we can grab the same layer mask that we've already created so but let's apply a layer mask and let's grab this one from the uh, Milky Way and hold alt and drag up and and uh, place it on that mask and you can see it's the same mask and we don't have to uh, duplicate our steps there which is nice um, and we can try and, and do the same process we did earlier so let's grab a, um, a levels and let's clip it so hold alt and clip to the star trails layer and just try and match up you know maybe make a boost up this contrast a little bit or you know it's it's subjective so do do whatever you feel you like and uh, drag uh, your sliders around until you get the desired effect let's add a hue saturation whoops we'll do that in a second the color balance hue saturation ah it wants to keep selecting that one here okay um, and let's see what we can do here. Maybe make add some more, a little bit more blue in there. Maybe take the saturation down a little bit to kind of remove some of that, that like yellowing that was coming in. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's try a color balance, <clears throat> and maybe we'll add some more blues that way. Take some of the yellows out of, of the image, and you can. Um, if you wanted to go to town with the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights here um, to produce the desired effect, like you can see, it takes out takes out some of the sort of the darkens the shadows a little bit and takes out some of the um, separation in between the the individual trails itself. So again, just play around with these until you get the effect that you like, and if you want. You can adjust the opacity of this guy and kind of bring that down a little bit. But let's just leave this one. Uh, let's just bring that down to like 83. That looks good. And again, we need to put this in our um, water reflection. So I'm going to select the four layers that we created. Control or Command J. With them still selected, I'm going to whoop, 
click over here and hit uh, merge layers control or command T and right click and flip vertical and now I can drag this down and just try and match it up with um, with our, our reflection like something like that and hit enter and let's blur filter uh, blur Gaussian blur and let's just bring that up uh, something like this and you know we can th these are the buildings are sort of blurred up and down so we can try and do like a, a, a motion blur and change the angle like to something like that and maybe just bring this down quite a bit uh, I don't know maybe something like that you can play around to get the effect that you want but this will help sort of create blur uh, top to bottom or vertically rather than just an overall blur and, and we could have done that with the um, uh, the Milky Way layer as well but uh, this is pretty good right here I think maybe I'm gonna lower that just a tad and that's pretty much all there is to it so uh, you want to change your your stars layer or your star trails layer to screen a play with the levels the hue saturation the color balance and create a Nice selection when you're masking uh, in and out where the stars should not appear. And uh, you'll be on your way to duplicating this type of effect without having to go sit out in the desert and take an image like this for a night. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Okay, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, please stay tuned to evervisions.com or please subscribe to the YouTube channel to see some new videos that I'll be updating uh, throughout each week and I know there's a lot of places that you can get uh, Photoshop photography and Lightroom information so again thanks for checking me out and uh, stay tuned also check out the evervisions.com website to see my uh, three-part seascape tutorial where I'll first show you how to use Lightroom only with one exposure to add some punch and pop to a seascape image next we'll take three bracketed images bring them into photomatics juice them up a little bit and then bring them back into Lightroom for some further juice and then in the third part, we'll use Photoshop and a luminosity masking technique to really make that one shine and pop and uh, look a little bit more professional. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks again.